and I'm going to shut off my ringer. I'm going to shut off my ringer. Okay, ringer's off. Ringer is off, and we are on? We are, re yes, yes, we are behind the scenes recording. <laughs> yes, we are. Oh, it feels, feels I like, missed this. I know, and it's funny because recording would probably feel like coming home, but for some reason, I need now for you to look over your right shoulder. Who is that picture of? It's your mom and... So this one I keep messing. I keep my chair keeps bending it. It sucks. Who I is it? it that's mom my mom, mom, my mom, and my stepfather. Oh, okay. Because I can't tell that, but that's what feels like coming home. It's because for some reason, seeing that picture, my pictures. Yes. yes, these are my boys. Look at kissing. I love this picture. Oh my gosh! And my husband's family at the beach, and then this picture of Evan like two years ago. It's He's funny. so cute now. Everyone is. I mean, I was looking at the. And then I will get off the reflection. The post you shared yesterday about making the, I want to say, teething biscuits. And it's so easy to fall into the, oh, they were so young. But then this morning, my daughter said something to me which was so insightful. I thought, oh, yeah, I don't miss that young where you can't express yourself and you're frustrated and yeah. you're crying. I don't miss that. I like the baby stage. Like when I see moms with other, I'm, it's funny, I'm in a really weird stage right now because I see parents with babies. And I'm very grateful I'm on the, I'm not in that stage. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I take a baby. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's cute. Here you go. You can have her back. Yes. Um, <laughs> but then when I look at my own babies, I'm just like, holy crap. Like, it's just more of a, it's not really that I miss that stage. It's more of the whole, I can't believe how much time has passed. It doesn't feel like that much time has passed. And what's terrifying is what's coming. I picked my daughter up yesterday and she looked at me and her jaw dropped. I'm like, what? She told me some words. She heard one boy say to another on a playground, stuff that I am sure she has heard before at home, swear words. And she was shocked. I'm going to miss that because she was like, and he was a fifth grader and fifth graders shouldn't use those words. Like yes. I'll miss that like naivete. I do love when I get like classroom gossip from right. Like did so-and-so got in trouble and he's oh Oh, yes, the in yes. trouble. That'll be gone so soon. So I will miss that. In trouble. Yeah, I do. And I think that's a way, that was my way of making him, uh, me being an ally versus a parent. An ally might be the wrong word. But uh, so when he always come home, like instead of it being about him, like how did you do in school today? And yeah. did you bring home a green? I'd be like, so did the class do well today? Like, did anyone get a red? Did anyone get it? And I kind of make it a, so it's, so instead of me just parent, like parenting and make, it was kind of like, let me align myself with him and let me be a person he can talk to, to about school versus, you know what I mean? Versus coming home and reporting back to me. I did good today. Like, I don't know. That yes. was my approach. And it's your reaction. Like, and this does in a sense tie back into fitness and our podcast. It's just the, it's everybody's always judging your reaction. This is what I did today. When you're the trainer, I didn't work out there. How do you react to this news? Are you there to support me? Is it punitive? Yeah, exactly. It's interesting how we're always watching people's reactions to what we're saying, kids and adults. That's true. They probably communicate more than we even realize. I know. Um, so uh, we got a lot to catch up on. I was going to say, my reaction <laughs> to this is we probably should actually start our official podcast because- Yes, I'm ready. I, I don't really know what it. we're talking about. We, we, have to, sure. we have to do and a I thing can... where like, we're back. Like, do you want me to, I could bring us in and then- You like bring us that. in, you say the number and we are off. What do I usually start with? <laughs> welcome, welcome to, to the Wick Wick podcast. podcast. That's right. That's right. Welcome to the Wick Wick podcast. Welcome. I, okay. I got it. I got it. All right, are you ready? I feel like what's her face from Orange is the New Black? Which I have not watched. No, no, no. Okay, we're going to get it. It's, a, it's the religious gauge. She always goes like this. Oh, my Which gosh. That's funny. Um, okay, I got it. All right. Welcome back to the Wick Wick podcast. We are back. It's been how long? Does, did we do a count before we? We didn't. I actually didn't. was thinking that this morning. I'm like, it feels, I cannot like remember the last time we did this. <laughs> It feels like um, we were in, the kids were back in, the kids were no, in school. No, 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 true. no. We definitely it's recorded true. in July. We definitely recorded in July um, because so we definitely ago. recorded around my beach vacation. I remember that. But then oh, I think right. we, we skipped the entire month of August. <laughs> August but kind of. is good. 
August kind of slipped right by us. <laughs> we were like, whoops. Yeah, I do think it's good. It is like blogging. I mean, I know that not everybody who listens even probably reads blogs, but it's the taking, it's pausing to live life. So you have something to podcast versus podcast, 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 and not living. You are frozen. You froze. I was like, oh, you froze. So did you. <laughs> That's okay. We'll try it. Like you're coming in really pixelated again. Let me see. I am. You're not. Like, and you talk. Yeah, you're coming in. So maybe it's my download speeds. That's odd. But anyway. You want to start again? No. That's nah, fine. Um, what were we talking about? We skipped the month of August. And you know what? It makes me think of not everyone who listens, reads blogs, writes a blog, might even know what a blog is. But sometimes when people say, oh, I'm taking a hiatus from my blog, I think, good for you. You're going to go live, not blog about life. And so we went off and lived and had adventures kind of, you more than I, and now we're back. Yes. Yes, I did have quite a few adventures. And part of me uh, thinks, well, I probably could have managed recording here and there during the, but I had to wick wick it. <laughs> I had to, I had to just kind of focus on what it is that I was doing. Do you know what I mean? I do. And it's like, if we don't practice what we preach, then our preaching it is so yeah. inauthentic. It's true. It's true. I'm trying to remember if we recorded. So, I mean, lots of the things that I did that were fun things, um, like my husband and I took a uh, kidless vacation to Punta Cana for the first time. Um, that was awesome. And then I'm always fearful I'm going to lose you, by the way. <laughs> oh, no. Lose my okay. interest or lose my... Well, no, no, no. well both. No, no. <laughs> interest and uh, technology-wise. Um, but anyway, then I did... I spent 11 days in Ohio helping my mom train a service dog, which was, which was an experience. It was really, it was really fun. And it was so interesting watching that from afar because we did not all the same, but a lot of the same stuff spread out over a year. So yours was like so unbelievably condensed. I would have been exhausted. It was exact. Well, and you have to realize that these dogs that, so my niece is getting a service dog for people who don't know. She's kind of on the autistic spectrum and, the dog is, we can tether her to the dog. We can use the dog for behavior disruption. The it's dog amazing. is trained. It's amazing. Really, the dog is trained to be able to identify seizures. So they've been training the dog for a year. We Blows just kind of, mind. we just kind of come in and then they really more train the handler than the dog, you know, so yeah, yeah, not yeah. everyone has that like alpha dog persona where they can you know, take over a dog. So it was really getting my mom up to speak because my mom is going to be the main handler, um, learning the commands, making the, that trust between her and the dog so the dog would listen to her and then bonding with my niece, you know, having the dog bond with my niece and things like that. So it was, it was intense. It was, we were there for 11 days. It was the second round for my mom. So we didn't have to go the full two weeks. So we, but we were there 11 days every day from nine to four in training for 11 days straight. In, in, now, yeah. will there be a lot of, no, there won't be more caretaking for your mom beyond having a dog. There's nothing additional or safe to give the dog constant booster shots to remember, this is what you're doing. Let's train. Uh, no, they do have to check in with the service gr dog group. Um, I think it's for the first, in the beginning, it's like the first month and then three months and then six months. So they kind of transition so they don't kind of just throw you this dog and say hey here you go it's trained they make sure that they're the transition is going smooth and then after i think the first year and then it's yearly check-ins and she has to have other people um kind of validate and write the company and say yes this dog is well behaved it's still do performing its duties because when you have the service dog license that dog is allowed on airplanes and in restaurants yes. and this is a quote-unquote working dog and so you can't be willy nilly if the dog is, you know, rambunctious or not listening or not doing its duties. They, you know, then they, the service dog thing really doesn't mean anything. So they have to keep the dog under control. And it's funny. I love the, the thing that I really appreciated about the whole experience was this concept that these dogs are quote unquote working, you know, these, they're working yes. now. Yes. And then you take the harness off and then and the dog, 
the, well, and this was the biggest question I got when I was sharing the experience was, you know, can you play fetch with him? Can you play? I'm like, yeah, you take that harness off and that dog's like, Ooh, I'm off work. And he's like, let's play ball. So amazing. <laughs> I know. And yeah. yet, now, do they do like with most therapy dogs? And I know I asked you this, but then I got confused on your answer. Can, if she's out with him, can other people come up and pet and love up yes. the dog? Because I know when you're blind and it's a service dog or deaf, no, you're not supposed to do they that. Can't. Well, the interesting thing about service dogs for autistic children is that the dog, another service that the dog provides is almost in a weird way, an icebreaker. A lot of these kids, oh, and I met right. a lot of kids like that have certain disabilities or certain mental disabilities, like how, whatever their own you know problems are, a lot of them don't one of the biggest thing is a social interaction right and you know it's yeah, you're not sure yeah. how to talk to that child you're not sure how to approach that child you know and we want to think it's easy and you know you just talk to them like another child but in actuality you know if a child has a tick or some other thing there were some kids in the class that had a lot of problems with like outbursts or voices and you know making noises right so and then the dog becomes this liaison between the child and other people. And so they encourage the dog, you know, they encourage you to, if someone comes up to you, to put the dog in a sit and let the child, if they're able, talk about the dog. And then it becomes this more social interaction for the child, which is, I mean, and for my niece, it's, my niece is social, um, but she is hard to talk to. And then now there's something to talk about, right? So it creates this common yeah. ground. And so it's, you know, other little kids come up to her. And I, my mom shared a story when she was in the first round of training about a mother who was in tears because I can't remember the disability that her child had, but it it made him almost invisible to people. People didn't interact with him. And then the first time they were out with the dog, I'm going to cry talking about it. <laughs> the first time they were out with the dog, all of a sudden these people were coming up to him and asking yes. him about his dog. And it was this, um, you know, again, it was like this icebreaker where it became all of a sudden he's somebody now, you know, and, and it gave him confidence. And it, so it, yeah, the, I got a whole new respect for, for like for service dogs. Yeah. It was amazing. It is amazing because it's an entirely different sort of service dog than I'm blind. Yes. It gives dog. you confidence yes. a seeing eye dog because now I can go out, but and I remember, I mean, when my daughter was in kindergarten, there were a couple of kids that were struggling socially. And of course, I'm sure the families had talked about getting a dog before, but they really got the dog for that same reason. Maybe yeah. this will be an icebreaker. And when other kids come over, everybody loves a puppy kind of thing. Yeah. And the dog is trained to be like, you should have seen some of the tests that they had this dog. So like, for example, the dog has to go under, the, the command is under when you go under. So if you go to a restaurant, you put the dog under and the dog goes oh, under the table and yeah. sleeps. So if food falls off this table, this dog is not supposed to get it. Do you know what I mean? It's not supposed right. to beg. It's not supposed to... So same thing when you're interacting with other people, um, like they recommend it to all the handlers. Like if someone approaches you, um, you know, most people are nice. They'll ask, you know, that's culturally, we, you know, you should, I always teach my kids, you should ask before you pet someone else's dog. So, um, but if they don't ask, you know, they were even kind of training the handlers to say, you know, you need to be more forceful and say, let me put my dog in a sit. You're more than welcome to pet him, but kind yes. of show people that the dog is working right now and that you need to respect that kind of boundary in a way. So they really, they spoke a lot about that and how to handle that, but then also the benefits of it. And of course, every child's so different, whether or not they see that as a bit, you know, a positive or a negative or whatever. But for us, it's a, po it's a huge positive because it does become a conversation piece. And my niece was, she loves the dog. She, the dog's name is cowboy. So it was cowboy this and cowboy that. And, oh, this, and, so and as cute. soon as she would say, this is cowboy, this is my service dog. This is cowboy. He's my service dog. Like he would, she would say it over and over again. So oh. it became something, a sense of pride for her too, really which is sweet. really, yeah, it was really sweet. It was. And it's interesting. We have a, I think a mutual friend, but she's in LA and she is on an endless crusade against, to paint with a broad brush, all the dogs she sees in LA, because that's where she is, that aren't really service dogs that people take into yeah. the groceries. And They're stuff, called um, companion. Emotional support animal. Yeah. So I yeah. was in the airport flying back. And of course my daughter, even though Charming is a therapy dog, Maybe we could ask for him to fly, but it's not really appropriate. It's not what he does, our golden doodle. And the woman next to us had her French bulldog. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, you're taking him on the plane? 
without missing a beat. Yes, he's my emotional support animal. And yes, there could have been some truth to the statement, but she was a pretty sassy looking 23 year old who didn't look like she needed any support. And it's like, we're bastardizing this. And yeah, dogs there's like, always going to be, so they, trained. they talked about that too in the training and they were talking about how you, cause there is law for the service dogs. There is laws like, dis, like, I think I don't wow. miss, misspeak, but I'm pretty sure it's part of the disability act. There's like specific laws. And that's why it was so important for my mom to get the service dog license um, and not a companion dog or emotional support dog because they're, they don't, they're not, uh, I don't think they have the same rights. Um, I'm not sure. I don't really know, yes. but I just definitely service dog. And that, so our, my job was done. I came, I helped the dog is trained. I learned so much about dog training. I want a dog now, but I don't. <laughs> I do and I don't, but um, yeah, it was it was definitely experience. So that was one reason why we didn't podcast. But we're back. But All we're back. Of that, we are back, and we're ready to start talking fitness, healthy living, small steps to perfection. No quick fixes. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> Hot topics always. They never go away. Which okay, I think let me ask you a question before we get started. Oh. And then you could ask okay, the same question. And I haven't thought of my own answer. Because we're kind to ourselves and we're very, we're not rigid as we plan A, plan B, plan C, plan C doesn't happen. Okay, today we're just right. staying in place. We're in the moment. Okay. We're in the moment. Do you think, it's harder for me because I don't have a traditional routine. Did you veer from your routine over the summer? Did you oh, not? This is a good topic. So hmm. I did not. Uh, I did, but I did. I mean, I remained flexibly consistent. Yes. Consistently flexible. I don't know how you want to say that it. That was me. That was so, yeah. So uh, I'll use the 11 days I was in Ohio um, as an example. So the one of the first things I did, and you could think this is sad, crazy, insane, uh, my mom said, um, she's like, okay, here's where it is. We're going to Xenia, Ohio. We'll hear from these dates and blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, okay, that's great. And, you know, I told my husband and we planned what we needed to plan on the family side. And then I went to uh, uh, CrossFit and I found the closest affiliate. <laughs> well, and I, so think again, that it, I needed it. I was like, I need my hour. Uh, and so I found a gym that offered a 6 a.m. class and I went and for every some day. People, it might be. I found the nearest Whole Foods or place where I could get healthy food yes, or whatever me, it is that yes. helps you maintain that. Because I was thinking this morning as I was looking at, I've done a big list as I look over at it on the refrigerator, checklist for the mornings, checklist for the evenings for my nine-year-old, starts and ends with the exact same action, starts for the morning, ends in the evening. And it's a way for you not necessarily to bookend your days with the CrossFit, but it gives you that like, I am in complete chaos. Where's my structure? I've got something to hang yeah. out on. Well, and I think, and I used, like when I was blogging about it, even on my Facebook page, I said, because you know, I'm doing that whole Loving 39 project for myself. So I try to do something daily just for myself every day. And I, and it really was eye-opening being there in the service of someone else. Like I was there to help her. I was yes. there for them. And and I talked about this on, on my social media channels about how important it is that even when you are at the service of others, take care of yourself. And so that was like the, for me, that was baseline way that I take care of myself is I hit the gym. Um, and to, there's so many other benefits. Like for me, it was a social benefit. I got to talk to other people that I, you know, meet yeah. these new people. I got to push myself out of my comfort zone. I got to even see how a different gym works and different exercises that they do and different approaches. So I find that like there's so many reasons why I enjoy doing it. Um, but yeah, I but went, I, I, what we talk about in the book about being responsibly selfish. selfish. Like if you were yeah. by yourself, because I was thinking about this when you said, Oh, you know, I found the CrossFit box. That was the hard thing about traveling with my daughter solo when she was younger. And I really wouldn't leave her in a hotel room. It's yeah. the gift of being with your mom. So you can be selfish, but you're being responsible. Your niece is totally- Yeah, I'm not leaving my niece alone right. with the dog. <laughs> so Say, nah, is, he'll take care of her. <laughs> like this summer, we did a lot of camps and all that kind of stuff. And I had forgotten how hot it gets in Austin in the summer and just taking that time where I could. And I didn't put 
any limits on the screen time this summer. We were so active because we have a pool here right. and she did horseback riding and climbing and all that. But I thought, you know what, that for me is being selfish. You know what? You can watch your iPad. There and is no school. Say, confession. I, yeah. don't really have, I don't really have I screen either. limits in my family. Because, because, because we do year, so much. Yeah. Like, like, thank you. During the year, yeah, there's not so, like she could be on it in all her free time. And with homework and activities, it is not very much. It's not much. No, I do the same thing. No. I don't. And if we are home for a long stretch, like a whole day, uh, I'll say, okay, you've been on too much. It's all, It's time. Go find something else to do. But I don't have this, okay, your hour is up. you got your TV time. Because, yeah, we're usually there. He's in soccer. He's in Lego club. He's in this. He's in that. And then by the time he gets home, it's an hour before bed. He wants to play Minecraft. Whatever. It's, it's what you said, too, about the we're home all day. And it's like, how rare is that? Like with her, oh, yeah. even in the summer, it was a lot of – stuff she wanted to do, but let's go, let's go, let's go. Horses, we got to go. Yes. And so it's like, yeah, I don't have any limits. And this, especially this summer, I would hand it to her so I could do something for myself that made healthy for myself that made me feel better. Totally selfish, but I needed it. Well, and that's funny. Well, the other, the other half of my August or part of my August was vacationing with my boys um, in, we went to Wyoming and Idaho and we had this amazing adventure I saw. So I've committed to taking my sons on a vacation, just me and them once a year, even if it's just, it could be a weekend or a night, yes. just some, you know, so it's just a small commitment. And lately I've had the means to be able to do a large, you know, longer vacation. So we took a week, flew to Salt Lake city. So nice. It was amazing. But again, I was alone with a four-year-old and a 10-year-old by myself. So finding time for me, was kind of interesting. Like, so here's an example of a trip I did not find a CrossFit yes. affiliate because I can't leave them home alone. Yes. I did not go running, which is another go-to of mine when I'm like, okay, I'm here and uh, okay, I'll take a run. But so, you did, was something I did notice that I admired was the, and this has absolutely nothing to do with healthy living, but being selfish in a way that is responsible is not the right word, but you wanted to go, was it some kind of food? That you took the kids out for. Oh, it took, we went to. Was it? I, I, okay, so I have rules. <laughs> I have rules. I fit, it sounds rigid, but it's really not. When we're on vacation, the kids are not, we've, A, we cannot eat at any restaurants that we could eat at at home. That's rule number one. If we can, if it, if it's a restaurant that we have here, then we're not eating at it because. And if that's not your thing, travel with me because we will go <laughs> to the same things. If we that's don't go to the same things. <laughs> And then we purposely tried to seek out unique things. So, or at least for this yes. way, we were very, our food choices were very ethnic. So we went to a Mexican restaurant. We went yes. to two actually. We, because Mexican restaurants are very popular in Wyoming. <laughs> I know. I'm not that sure why, but. surprising to me. It was surprising to me too. I don't know the area that well. I'm sure people who live there go, oh no, that's because of X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, oh, whatever. Amazing Mexican restaurants. Amazing. Um, and we did a Thai restaurant. So yes, I did share a photo on uh, Instagram where I said we're going to Thai. You know, we went to Thai because I pushed my kids out of their comfort zone as well. And you know, we shared a big noodle dish. It was great. I told them not make it, don't make it too spicy or whatever. But they ate what I ate. My other rules are they they're not allowed to eat off the kids menu if it's not something also offered on the adult menu. So you know it's when you, tell, you say that because we <laughs> tend to do kids menu, but it's only because it's smaller. It's like yes, grilled smaller. salmon. Yeah, that's Portion smaller. Is fine, but if that's you're at point. say a Thai restaurant, and, and they then offer you, and then spaghetti. the kids menu has chicken nuggets and French fries yes. and hot dogs, I go no, 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 no. Are those available to adults? Then no, you're not allowed to have them. That's my yeah. rule when we're on, when we're I, you know, and when we're home or whatever. We I'm a little less. But when we're out, I'm like, this is all about our experience. You know, this is all about experiencing things and trying new things and getting them out of their comfort zones as well as my own. But I did take time for myself. So that was, so I, this project I'm doing, if anyone listened to or one of, I think I brought it up in an old, old podcast. Um, I turned 39 in July. And then I'm, my goal is every day to do something just for me, um, regardless of, you know, what's happening in, in you know, you have now, especially at school and then helping my mom, things like that. So there could be something as small as enjoying a piece of dark chocolate before bed or going to CrossFit. Yes, something. Yeah, exactly. So when I was with the kids alone, um, some examples of the things that I did was one night I set my alarm for two. And now I'm in the middle of um, Idaho, right close to the Wyoming border. 
uh, in the middle of nowhere, right next to the Grand Tetons, the mountains. It was beautiful. And I knew the sky would be absolutely gorgeous in the middle of the night. Oh, yes. I remember that. Because there's no, you know, city lights. Yeah. So I set my alarm for like 2 or 2.30 a.m. And the kids are sleeping. And I went outside and I took my camera and I just took in the sky, like just 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Something that simple. But I was like, that was important to me. Like that was something that I wanted to do just for me. So I think there's that. I mean, this is as wick wick as it gets, right? There are ways that you can care for Always. yourself that are just so small. But I think acknowledging that they, you forget about those little things. Like that's what this whole project is for yes. me. Like you forget that enjoying a piece of dark chocolate for five minutes and having the kids watch TV and going into another room is a form of a simple self care. Like it's just, yeah. So I'm, and, I'm, yes, for me, I'm acknowledging them. Totally that. Yes. And it was the, we did camp. The day seemed really long because I'd forgotten how hot it was, but it's all an attitude. It sounds so silly. And, but yet it, we say it repeatedly on our Facebook page in Instagram, in the book. And it's so true. It's all how you view it. Where today can I seize time for me versus, and I can super get into this. My husband took a new job and now he's going to be gone three weeks a month, only Monday through Friday, but it feels like a beating. And my attitude last year would have been like, oh, great. This is really hard for me. I don't get any time for me. And the past just few weeks of school, I've thought, how today can I make this about me even for 30 minutes? It's yes. all, it's our attitude. It's all attitude. Well, and that's, I mean, it's the same with healthy living, right? We talk about this in the book all the time. Like the, you can look at trying a new food as like, oh, I have to eat this because I'm not allowed to eat what I really want to eat. Or you can start to approach your food choices going, wow, I get to try all these new things. I didn't realize that kale was so good or whatever it might be. Like, you know what I mean? So I really think that's what my last post was about on my personal blog. Like, <laughs> This idea of framing stuff is so important. And it, I guess attitude is probably the best word that you've nailed the word. I, and I was adding in, framing. I think about, yeah. and this can be a beep beep to our horns about the book because it's been a while. We have a book available on Amazon and other fine retailers. Um, I think about this so often because as humans, we can be maxed out. We won't say busy, but we can think, I've got a lot happening. And sometimes it's all too easy to think, what can I eliminate to do something for me today? And the answer truly might be nothing. Everything is you got to do it, but it's where can I add in? And that has been so helpful to me over the summer. Where can I add in time for me versus what can I get rid of? Because sometimes you really might not be able to get rid of anything. It's true. And yes. you're just adding in. And in the book I love, and I think this was all your idea, adding in the health. So I'm still having the... I'm starting out. I'm still going to Wendy's drive through for my lunch. I'm having a chicken sandwich and fries and a Diet Coke, but I'm going to add in a salad. Big yes. steps. Or a swap it, right? Or a swap it out. Like, oh, I'm I almost get my... think that's the second step. I you think, like, for see? me, well, for me with my what? food, the first step was adding it in, getting in the habit yes, of always I see what you're saying. Salads. It's almost like a tiered only approach. Down, right? Yes. Yes. That is a great tiered approach for me. And I mean, and, and I think it all depends on what your goals are. Like and your personality sometimes. Yeah. So for, like if I'm like, oh, I really, sometimes I really, really want the spicy fried chicken sandwich at Chick-fil-A. You <laughs> I love the word spicy. <laughs> spicy. I love the spicy. Never had sriracha. I'm all about grilled. Get the grilled chicken. Get the grilled chicken. Yes. Get the. I always get the grilled chicken, grilled chicken, grilled chicken. It's great. But then sometimes I'm like, I really want the fried spicy chicken yes. sandwich. So then I just go, okay, instead of the fries today, I'll get the soup or I'll get the salad. So for me, that's like a way. So that's and how that's I kind like of it's where you are today. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. For me at the beginning, it really was the adding in and realizing I kind of liked this stuff and later eliminating, but it's also a personality thing. Some people like to rip that bandaid off right away and go straight from the burger fries and Coke to grilled salad. Yeah, I've always water. been a swapper. I've, I'm a swapper. So I always, like, I remember when I first, first, first started making changes to my diet and I was losing weight on Weight Watchers and I was doing the whole points thing, all that. I remember I, I ate at McDonald's a lot. I, I haven't eaten at McDonald's in months, years. Not that I think it's bad. It's just not in my routine anymore. Yes. But back then that was, 
a regular, you know, once a week at least kind of thing. And I couldn't imagine eating. I would, I already made the change from the burger or the fried chicken to the grilled chicken sandwiches. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I was like, I need, I can't just eat a grilled chicken sandwich. I need that fry. I need that, you know, thing on the side. And so I, at that time, now we're not talking 10 years ago. Okay. This is really a long time ago. It was right when the hundred calorie packets came out. Remember when everything, right. everything became a hundred calorie packets? I still do had, those with nuts. Some of that estimated. Yeah. So I will do the extra trash for the nuts. The, they had hundred and they probably still do, but I don't buy them anymore. They had hundred calorie packs of wheat thins. And this oh, was like a tip those. I gave on my Ronnie's Way blog in like 2006. Okay. That's how old it is. And I said, my tip was bring the 100 calorie bag of yeah. wheat things with you to the fast food place skip the fries and have the hundred. So you still get that. Oh, I can get bite of my sandwich and I got a chip. Oh, I get to buy yes. it. So you still get this, you know what I'm saying? But you're saving how, I mean, up, up teen, uh, how many calories are in a, a small or medium fry versus a hundred calorie pack is immense saving. So I've, even from the get go, I was a swapper. It was how I, how I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. Which is, and I wonder if that's out. a uniquely American construct. I know we have some international listeners, but I remember when I was little freaking out when my grandmother took me out to eat somewhere and crying because I didn't know where my whiffet was and she had no idea what I meant. What the and heck it, is a whiffet? <laughs> it was the, yeah, I get a hamburger, but what am I getting with it? Oh. I'm so little. And I wonder, is that an American thing? Like I remember one of the first dates I went on with my husband, he ordered his entree and I know we've talked about this, didn't eat the side dishes. And I thought, wow, you belong in a museum. Who does that? Yes, sides like, oh, are I a didn't big want deal. them. Yes. Yeah. I'm always like in I'm always like, well, what are my sides choices? Yes. <laughs> and is that everywhere? I'm so curious. I can't I remember. Never, I never thought about that before. I think we've ruined the rest of the world probably and brought them to our our level of yes. eating way too much at every meal. Yeah, my side dish, it's funny because I still have like side dish strategies. So I it, you know, so I, I'm really good. I, I talk about this all the time. Like French fries, I think are absurd in our country. <laughs> it's just absurd that if you go anywhere and say everybody gets a burger, everybody gets an amount of fries. So I have this like family rule, which really, really works for us is that only one of us are allowed to get fries. So then we share that person's fries. And, and I love your phrasing. It really, really works for us. It's us. the book, yeah, it's healthy it's living totally on your terms. You got to do what you So, for, for example, you. my, my husband, he's one of those guys that'll get fries, like get a burger and fries. He'll eat three fries and he's done. And then he gives the plate back. And I'm always like, if I have the fries in front of me, I'm eating the fries. It doesn't, and then, I, and then I'll eat his fries and then I'll eat the kids fries because they're there. So I said, one of us gets fries, usually the husband. So they're not in front of me. <laughs> yes. And then the side dishes that we pick, I always get, so kids meals, gosh, they always come defaulty with fries. And so I always ask the waitress, can we get steamed broccoli or what vegetable do you have on the side or whatever? So the kids get, one of them gets a fruit, one of them gets a vegetable, you know, they swap or share. We get one fry for the family and then I'll get like a side salad or whatever with mine. And it works. So we don't have this like massive amount of food on the table that we eat, even though we're not hungry anymore, just because it's available to us. So yeah, so that's my side strategy. And it's interesting with us, we used to go out all the time in Austin before we moved and then moving back, it is like never. It's more habit in the summer we're go, go, go and then crash and have food. During the school year, it's like we just don't. So I don't even, when we go out, I don't really think about it. And we just went to Chicago to visit family and we were out with a big group. I never think twice about what my daughter orders, although she's crazy and it's such the practice don't preach. She is obsessed with steamed broccoli because I am. So she actually got that by choice, which was we super weird. <laughs> but they offered and happily brought to the table a kid's meal of two slices of pizza and French fries. And I thought, wow, in what country is this like even something you do? Yeah. Why not do match pizza and French fries? So it's so funny. Yes. I know there are no parameters put out there for us. So we have to create our own terms. Otherwise, every time you go out to eat, oh, it may Oh, yeah. That was a big – I think one of the things I used to talk about too is I feel like there's almost this big – it's not a lie. It's just a misconception 
that we have we kind of assume that what you get at a restaurant is a quote unquote serving. I'm getting yes. a serve. But what you're getting is like four servings. You know, it's just really sad. Um, and it's just a matter of yeah, just being aware and being conscious and going okay. I know, especially you don't know how they're, you know, I can go on a tangent about this with the, you know, they're slathering butter on a bun. That's another hundred calories. You don't even realize it's, it's there. So they're putting, interesting. It's yes. So crazy to me. Oh, you um, nailed it with butter. That's our perfect segue. Oh, that okay. is a segue. Butter. I was just thinking how Have we were going to. done this? I know because we, the thing we wanted to talk about today, which is just kind of fun chit chatty as we get back in the groove is titled what go. Oh, oh, wait, me, I'm, wait, I'm not ready. <laughs> it's the thing. It's butter in your coffee. Butter in your coffee. Bo- con stories from a fitness inside. Yes, yes. Um, this article that you had is, that you shared is, it's amazing. It was one of the best, better reads I've read this week where I just got sucked yes. in. At first, I, I kind of looked at the length of it. And I was like, oh, I don't have time to read this. Me too. And then once, yes. I, <laughs> then once I started reading, I was like, Oh, this is fascinating and fascinating for me on multiple levels. A, yes. as someone who's in the industry, um, you know, trying to sell a book, trying to have readers for my blog, trying to kind of make it in this, I don't even know what yes. I could call myself anymore. Uh, but then also someone as, like as a consumer of someone who's fallen prey to like every diet claim out there who has seen before and after photos and has fallen for them. So I did, I found this article, um, definitely uh um intriguing on multiple levels that's what i'm saying (laughs) yes it was really interesting to me when i found it and this is kind of like starting in the middle but a big thing in the fitness industry are those before and after shots and also now it's only been the past year or so all year so all the blog posts and articles debunking those and i thought it was really interesting how they talked about Bodybuilding, and now not a lot of yes. women in the fitness industry or who want to lose weight aspire to look like bodybuilders, but many of them do want to look like some of these fitness competitors who aren't highly muscular. And I laughed out loud that they cited a friend of mine, Lee Priest, and they talk about, we can like the article, how in order to gain muscle, you need to gain a lot of everything, muscle, fat, water, and then you lean out before you compete. Yes, it's called so bulking and cutting, bulking. right? Yes. Yes. yes, they would take pictures of Lee, who was renowned for his bulking phase being like 70 pounds, and then cutting when he was on stage. And he was a this was his career. He competed in the Mr. Olympia competition, but then using those pictures to advertise their weight loss right. product. Yes. I I think this is one of the biggest so the the biggest takeaway from the article actually and one of the things I think in our this is going to sound really lofty as a goal or I don't know the word I'm looking for but the thing we need to change most really about our marketing and media in this country and how much of, like how farcical it is and but how that affects people negatively so what I'm trying to so I'll I have a for, let me back up one second. So the article is really all about marketing in the fitness industry and how it's done. And um, I don't know, how else would you say? Like, I want to say the duplicitous nature of it and that yes. it's not all truthful, but basically. It's so much deeper than that though, in a weird way. Um, <sighs> Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to like get a sentence to describe this article. That's how good it's it like was. anything <laughs> else though, but it's more the you know what, we know that before and after pictures aren't always true when it comes to home sales. Or I let's say I'm a clutter consultant and I show before Susie's office and after Susie's office. Or I'll take the we infomercials look, with like OxyClean. Like, look, I can get yes. this thing out. Yes. <laughs> and for some reason, we look at those and think, oh, that might work. I don't know. But they take, it's because it's almost preying on our vulnerability if I put butter in my coffee and do that bulletproof coffee, I'm going to be super skinny in like two weeks because that's what I want to believe. We want to believe so much. Yes. Well, and I like how the article touched on basically where in un- this isn't new. There's always been snake oil salesmen, right? right. There's always, we're always going to, everyone's yes. trying to sell you something. But when it comes to fitness um, and health and weight loss, you're affecting people's health, really. Like it's, yes. it's like so much more. Um, 
you know, if you, someone gets duped and they buy some kind of detergent and it didn't work or like, like my husband and I always joke about the uh, flex seal. You ever see the commercial where, where they spray the screen and they turn it into a boat, you know? Okay. Well, if you bring that home and it doesn't really work the way you, it advertised, well, okay. You're out 20 bucks. And it's but, juggle bubbles. We bought those, the juggle yes, bubbles. That are yes, we bought juggle bubbles. Yes. But it's yes. these people's lives. But this is your health and your life. So yeah. you can't, it, it's kind of scary really when we're using those same techniques to get people to spend money. Um, but it's more than just losing your money. You're, you're losing your health. You're losing your, you know, even I mean, mentally just the, the taxingness of yo-yo dieting or trying another plan or this is going to work for me now. And you know, this, yes. it's just, it's like the never ending world. So to go back to the point you were making though, about the bulking and cutting. So there's, I, I, I only took out a few paragraphs I was going to read for people. Okay. And that one of them is about that. Cause I thought this was really my favorite paragraph in the whole place. Um, in the whole article. And it says what oh, most wait. people don't know about, uh, the physics or the physiques who grace the front of fitness magazines. So all the models you see in fitness magazines and shape and, I don't even know them anymore because I don't buy them anymore. I don't either. <laughs> I don't either. It's funny. But what most people don't know is that the physiques who grace the front of a fitness magazine don't remain that way year round. Yeah. They don't even look like that for very long because – That is what shocked me huge. when I first yeah. went to a competition. Even the next day after yeah. they went out to dinner and drank like a that. ton of water. No. Because they probably went through a series of water manipulating techniques to create that peak yeah. yet short lived physique for a photo shoot. In fact, many bodybuilders go through extreme physical changes fairly regularly. And I thought about this and I think about now as someone who's like, I've been crossfitting for two and a half years, I compete locally and, you know, scale divisions. And I'm around super fit people. I mean, the, I watch in awe with these women. I'm, I'm more usually intrigued by the women because I think maybe I'll be able to do that one day. Yes. Um, but so I'm looking at these women in these competitions who are at the peak of their like athletic ability. They're, they're doing muscle ups and strict pull ups and they're doing handstand push ups and they're running 800 meters in a minute. And they're, you know, I mean, these people are super fit and they eat to support their athleticism. They look nothing like, Anybody I ever seen a catalog, they don't look like anybody in a fitness yes. magazine. They have broad shoulders, they're muscular. I mean, of course, now this is one specific, you know, I guess, sport or what, you know, like. Uh, but even physique. Christmas Abbott, who looks amazing, it's amazing. Genetic. She's by speed, yes. genetically, there's so much genetics at work yeah, as well. So it's like sometimes when the more and more I get into fitness and the more and more I'm surrounded by fit people and I look at their bodies, it's, it's very. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not, it's, oh, I can't think of the word. <laughs> it's relieving. It's relieving. I don't know. And for me, it's like eye opening yes. and it makes me feel so much better. I think because my whole life as an immature young woman, I'm looking through an athleta magazine or a, you know, a catalog for supposed athletes. Um, and I'm looking at, you know, one body type, this one skinny female body type, you know, with no little extra, sports bra fat hanging over and you know no dimples on the thighs and no and i always thought well if i did what they did or if i do what they do i'll yes. look that way you know if i just need to eat right i just need to eat perfect i just need to work out every day and i'll look like that but in reality if you really look at athletes if you look at even olympic athletes yes some of them look amazing that we think they should look like, like on a cover of a magazine. But if you really look at them across the board, their bodies are so different. Oh my gosh, yes. The variety is amazing. For me, it went so much more deep even than the Photoshop and all of that. Yes, it's yeah, it's even deeper. Than of, well, and it's the realization of, and this is why I love the article, and it's so worth the read. These people who create, I'm going to pull this one out. Don't yell at us because I don't think we know anybody who's a big fan. It makes me think of the 90s. Hydroxy cut or those kind of things. Yes. They're not just fitness people. That they are marketing, yes. marketing wizards. And I think that's what we need to remember. We buy the juggle bubbles and they don't work. And it's a great teaching moment for me and Emma. And I think, oh, not everything is what they say it is. They just market it really well and it looks really good. I think sometimes in fitness, we forget in the moment, oh my gosh, this is what I need. And we don't step back and think, 
oh, this fitness guru is not just a fitness guru. They're a marketing machine. That's the second paragraph I took out. Yeah, it's about. like so let me, marketing. It's the marketing. And this, this to me was eye opening because as someone who, I mean, my, I got, I'm doing what I do now because I felt so passionate. Like when I, when I finally saw the light, however you want to say it, I'll, I'll channel my inner, uh, Susan powder. What was her name? When I stopped the insanity, Yes, that was her, <laughs> that was her right? I, uh, I wanted to like scream from the rooftops, like guys, like not only is like, I was able to lose weight, but it's because I didn't approach it this way anymore. I didn't, I didn't like, you know, so I had this really is cheesy and I'll pat myself on the back. It was very pure. I have a very pure um, goal in mind when I blog. I really want people who think the way I used to think, because I know tons of people are still out there to see the way I think now and say, look, it's possible. You can kind of change your approach and maybe you're not, you're not going to look like a Victoria's Secret model or whatever it is that you're kind of seeking, but the benefits of it are so much better. So as someone who's in this, like, we're, you know, we're trying to sell this book. We're trying to like teach people to think a different way, to approach a different way and kind of just spread a good, healthy message. Reading an article like this sometimes is a little, it's a little depressing because you're like, okay, yeah. I'm not, a mar I'm not willing to make these claims. And then, but it's like, but only people who make those claims are best-seller in books and best-selling podcasts and get advertisers for their podcasts. And you know what I mean? Like, but we're over here, like in the corner going, there's a better yeah. way, you know? And it's like, but, and we're not willing to do the things that, you know? So anyway, let me read the paragraph because I think it'll make more sense because I'm blabbing now. <laughs> All right. If you hear a person or a product, if you hear about a person or a product, it wasn't necessarily because their methods work. See that that's huge. Yep, for me. So when you see exactly like it. bulletproof fitness or what's another thing that works fast. Um, the one for me was a uh, Xenadrin Xenadrin. Oh, yeah, big I member Xenadrin. Oh, I'm not, I will I confess. I took that. Yeah. Don't don't, if it's still out there, please your heart will, it's a horrible anyway. So if you hear about a person or a product, it wasn't necessarily because their methods work. It's because they marketed their ass off. That was a quote from the article. Those yeah. who rise to the top are simply those who are best at selling their quote wisdom, even if it's completely wrong. Elite fitness makers know that getting your attention is the only thing that matters and they will go great lengths to build their business around capturing it. So they put more emphasis on the game. Selling you something like this, or is that article where he talks about how the science guy left his boss? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yes. About, um, I mean, literally, there are quotes from this guy who say, just find me a study that'll support this because I need to be able to say, and he, oh, it doesn't right. even have to support it. It just needs to sound like it supports it. That's so yes. scary. That's so scary. Anybody can find a trusted source. And it seems like so many of these trusted sources, and we will not say names, have been discredited. And it's rare that that actually happens. No one yes. bothers to check the science. They just hear Dr. Bob Smith yes. says, if you do this, it works. And look at her. And yes, it's, I mean, when I saw the article too, I thought, oh, this is super long. It won't hold my attention. It's going to be all no, stuff we already me. know. But it was interesting. And it's the perfect thing to focus on kind of as we get back into the swing, like you've said in your blog of routine and school year. And it's just about being an informed consumer. Whatever it is you choose to do, you may want to look like a Victoria's Secret model, but pick the tools that are really going to get you there. Don't you, get distracted just because it's marketing. That says you, it will you, get you there. You have transitioned to all of the paragraphs in which I, <laughs> we are so in sync, it's not even funny. The la one of the last ones said, um, this was uh, at the end of the article, uh, I, I don't know if it's he or she who wrote it, I, I'm not sure, but it will, um, they gave advice. And it said, instead, treat the industry like you're walking alone at night in a dangerous neighborhood. This is like so fitness industries, commercials, anything that's marketed to you. Stay cautious, avoid sketchy looking alleys, and only walk along brightly lit areas. And when this happens, you'll catch yourself. You have more common sense than you think because sometimes yes. common sense is as easy as realizing that someone's weight loss advice is to eat more butter, which is the whole bulletproof butter thing, which 
I will say I have watched that guy's stuff and I'm always like, people really think this is a good idea. I don't want to make fun of people who have ever tried to put butter in there. But I mean, because I've done, let me, I have done my fair share of things in the name of weight loss, which I look back and go, uh, what was I thinking? And if but, you love it, like I love, and people still laugh at me because I still eat them all the time because I love them. I'm so plain. Like when you said the spicy Wendy's chicken, I was like, no spicy. I love rice cakes. I'm going to confess. I love them. That's, so like if you cakes. enjoy it, keep <laughs> doing it. Like the bulletproof coffee, but I eat them because I like them and not because not I think because you think they're going to, yeah. right. Not that you think if I eat these, I'm going to lose 10 pounds by the it's end skinny. of the week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, keep doing it. Yeah. If it was what, if it's what works for you, but it's kind of like, I think of coconut oil, like coconut oils rise to the, it's a cure all for everything. Yes. And you can oil pool and you should eat it in your coffee and you should put it on there. And, and I bought it. Cause I was like, okay, let me try this coconut oil stuff. You know, I have fallen in love with the taste of coconut oil. So, it may or may not help metabolize my whatever or make me burn fat faster. I don't know. I don't know. But it tastes darn good on popcorn. So I will continue to put it on yes. popcorn. And but I'm I the flip side. Yeah. Like I oil pull with the plane because I'm so – there's so much um, – oh, my gosh. This is I can't think of the name and that's not funny. Alzheimer's in my family <laughs> and they say it might prevent it. And they said <laughs> that it's great for periodontal disease and that's a risk worth taking to me. It's that, mm, is it going to do anything? Probably not. But is it hurting me? No. And that's the reason to jump into, like you said, yeah. I like the taste or yes, it's not going to oh, hurt me. If you ever have virgin coconut oil on popcorn with sea salt, it Seriously, if you start, it's delicious. <laughs> if you pop your own popcorn, Ugh. air pop popcorn, put a little coconut oil and a little salt. Uh, for me, I, I once I did that, I never bought microwave popcorn. I don't need that a little coconut oil. Yeah, this one I made. You know, it is the perfect example because that could make me skinny in five months. Yes. Yeah. No. So no. not good to me. It's so it's a great good. article. We'll link it. It seems really long. We have no connection with the author, but it is really great. It's to worth a read. Save it's it and read. read. Yes. And if you got our joke about the, you know, our title of our, our return podcast, yes. it will let you. It will let you in on our on the joke. Secondly, <laughs> our next podcast is just the audio reading of the butter in your coffee and other cons <laughs> article with all of our sidebar stories, like in because <laughs> yes. you know we're really good at that. <laughs> I am so happy we are back into our routine. This is really yeah. It's been really fun. I miss talking to you. Yes, it's been fun. And I, I do have oh, the. I do have a, do you have a Wick Wicker of the Week? Did you remember? I did, but you know who I picked ah! as my Wick Wicker of the Week? <laughs> Me? Mine is not. No, it's <laughs> funny because I'll go first because mine is not a person. I was starting to think who is the Wick Wicker of the Week and going through, and I went back through the link that you put on our Facebook page, what you can, when you can, like us on the book of the face. And I thought, oh my gosh, everyone who's still Instagrammed and still tweeted and still shared about us and their blog posts, even though the podcast was on hiatus, it's our whole community is my Wick Wicker of the Week because we were doing what we could when we could and they kept with us and kind of carried the load with us. And so it's our whole community is mine. Is that I yours? Love oh, I love oh, that. that. Because it's That's so tough. true. I was so touched that no one, people did say they missed us, but they didn't abandon ship at all with Twitter, Facebook, Instagram posts. No. Which I think not, is a sign of it being a movement and not just podcast. You know, that. I'm going to, I probably shouldn't. Uh, so I did a search, an image search the other day for something I can't remember. And um, I was, it was Wick Wick related. I was looking for something Wick Wick related. And I found a meme. Uh, you know what a meme, everyone knows what a meme yes, is. Yes, like yes, a photo. Yes. So I can't remember. It was something from Mean Girls, I think. I don't know. But it said, it said, um, Wick Wick which you know, stop trying to make it happen. Oh my gosh. No way. Yeah. That is hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. And I, and I thought it was hilarious and it was on go me or whatever, you know, whatever I don't read. I didn't read the post. I don't care. Um, but I found it really awesome. funny. I really, I found it that really funny. Happened. Exactly. I was like, so wait, we, so you, 
if if it's happening, it just made me laugh because it was one of those things that where if you're so annoyed best. by, if you're so annoyed by it, but yet it must be happening if you're annoyed by it because that you're making funny. memes about it now, which is I'm like, the first person to say it would hurt my feelings if someone. No, it hurt my feelings like, a little bit. Oh, see, like, that only makes me laugh because it's like if you are spending your time creating that, oh, it's happened. <laughs> yes, right. I thought that was really funny, but yeah, it was. That's I think I think to myself, even if there's only three people using the Wickwick hashtag, me, you, and our one book buyer, it's yes. happened and it's helping us. So go oh away, <laughs> leave me that alone. Yeah, priceless. Funny. Oh my gosh, that is the best note to end on. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is one of the best. That is pretty good. But I do have a quick wicker a week. I don't want to forget her. Oh, that's not, oh, I thought that was her. Okay. No, yeah. no. I she okay. I should have made the maker of the wick wick stop making it happen. So that's what I thought it was. I was like, oh, but okay. I didn't even bother to click on it to find out who made it because I didn't care. Oh my gosh, that's um hard. no, so my wick wicker a week is more it's I have to bring it out. I have to end on food because <laughs> because food is my thing. So no, it's it's someone new who's been wick wicking uh, on Twitter more recently. I would say new because it's been a while now, but new since we have stopped the podcast. You know what I'm saying? So her name is Sarah, and she goes by um, at SP Girl Twelve. Okay. And this was a couple of days ago. This was a couple of days ago. And the only reason why I'm making a wicker of the week is because I completely agree 100. percent So her tweet was. Currently excited about spaghetti squash. Yes, vegetables are exciting, especially when they resemble angel hair pasta. I 100% agree, and it kind of circles back to my beginning note about I'm a swapper, and spaghetti squash is one of my BFFs. And so I was happy to see someone excited about uh, vegetables and winter squashes as much as I am because I'm a dork. <laughs> That is, those are both are really good. I think our ending is awesome. We pick you the community. That meme is awesome. I forgot to share that with you. I should have shared. Squash is great. Oh no, because no. that made my jaw drop. It was so funny. <laughs> Spending the time. It's happened. Fetch has totally happened. Happened, yes. Now, if only, I don't know, 10,000 more people will buy our book, we'd be set. Oh my gosh. That is <laughs> Whatever. Awesome. On that, oh, so what's our plan now? I'm We're going to be back every other week, right? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to, yeah. So uh, if we're going to take care of some business, just so everyone knows, our plan is to record by monthly. Is that the right way to say that? Every other week, just so yeah. that we can keep up the schedule and, and have a little bit more flexibility. So um, it's just easier <laughs> to be honest. We're wick wicking the podcast and reducing uh, what is possible for us in our schedules. That's right. So we are by, I think it is bi monthly. Bi weekly bi always monthly? confused me because it made me think That's it twice, twice a, a week. Twice a week? Yeah. Bi, I think bi monthly. I think the official I'm definition sure. is it could be it could be twice a month or every other month. But we're we're using it as twice twice a month. A month. <laughs> every other week is the best way to say it. But we will be yes. here every other week. Yes. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening this week. I'm glad to be back. Wick wick. Oh so my wick wick. Oh, that was so fun. I that was so work. fun. And that is the funniest thing ever. I forgot to tell you. I forgot. I was looking I... for a meme to put on the Facebook page because I was like, oh, I haven't posted anything in a while. And I was like, oh, let me try to find something kind of funny or whatever. So I put – and I was like, oh, well, let me see if anyone else has made one. So I put Wick Wick meme or Wick Wick something. I can't remember. And it was like this little teeny – and it had the girl from Mean Girls. And she's like a little scowly face, you know. That is I think the it was funny. A girl for me, girl. Yeah, and it was like quick, quick. I'm doing that. Yeah. People who have lots of time on their hands, apparently. That but. is awesome. Oh my gosh, Chris will laugh so hard because we always say, "Stop trying to make fetch happen." That is so funny. Yes. Yeah. So okay. I guess we've officially made it. <laughs> All right, go we're still recording, life. so I'm gonna. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, let me. I'll, I'll, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm going to brain dump right now for the Awesome. Post, I have so I do not a forget. busy afternoon, so I will. It's great in a rush. Yeah, I'll probably edit on Monday um, because I got myself into this sponsored post on Ronnie's Way, and now I'm kind of like, blah. <laughs> so I have no, to I do know. that, and I have a recipe for Green Life Bites I have to write up. Um, and then, and I'm going bowling this afternoon, long story, but Yay. it's. Yeah, so I joined a league. Did you see my post? I joined a bowling league. did. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's fun. That's all I'll say. <laughs> all right. I'm going to sign off.
Okay, I will let you know when the post is in there. Yeah, drafts just shoot me, or whatever. Just me an email and perfect. I, we only have one article to share, so we don't have a lot of links to do or anything. Oh, perfect. I'm going to save that. Okay. All right. Perfect. Goodbye. Have fun.